Temps, Pilot, The Hangover Potion, written by Julia Aaron Montanez. <clears throat> Exterior apartment building, night. Gambit, early 30s, has a derelict appearance with torn and grungy clothing and a rough, dingy beard. He screams at the third story window. April! Let me in! We're gonna catch cancer out here! Shut up, you moron! This is inhumane! I have rights as a bum! Sirens sound. Cop cars surround Gambit. Police officers get out and put him in cuffs. Ow! Wait. Oh, I'm peeing! I'm peeing! Interior, moving van, front seat, hours later. Snoring, Gambit wakes from his dream. He quickly grabs his forehead, squinching his eyes and rubbing his temples. Empty beer cans fall from off his chest. He reads the car radio clock, 9 a.m. In a panic, he opens the overhead visor flap, allowing a toothpaste tube and toothbrush to fall into his lap. He brushes his teeth vigorously. Exterior, New York City streets, day. Cindy is walking and reading her navigation on her phone. Where the hell is this place? She tries to stop a black guy on the bike. He passes by her. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for 6500 Broadway. It is somewhere. I look like the black GPS or something, ho. Black guy pedals off. Well, uh, good morning to you too, ass clown, freaking New York City. Interior interview, day. Lacey sits in front of her interviewer in silence. They stare at each other. Are you going to answer the question? Are you sweating? Lacey, late 20s, grabs a nearby trash can and vomits inside. She sits up, wiping her mouth. Uh, I graduated three years ago, my teeth. No, so, I'm sorry, that's that's not my voice. Um, I'm just getting really anxious and... Um... She vomits in the trash can again. <coughs> Interior bank, day. Abogato, handsome Nigerian, early 30s, walks inside the bank. He has a suit on. He stops in the middle of the floor. Hello, everybody. Don't move. Customers throw their hands up, surrendering. I have an interview today. Abogato throws up finger handguns and shoots everybody with them. He laughs loudly. <laughs> I joke. It is a good thing in America. <clears throat> Interior subway train car moments later. Gambit is stretched across the subway seat, snoring, wearing a wrinkled suit and tie. His thick beard has drool on it. People on the train stare at him with frowns and high noses. The train stops, doors beep open, waking Gambit. A little girl and her mother enter the train. What stop is this? The mother protectively pulls the young girl closer to her. Never, never land. Oh, this is where I get off. Gambit dashes off the train. Exterior, New York City streets, same. Gambit exits the station and walks around the corner to a huge building. His phone rings. He answers it. What, Justin? I'm late for work. He enters the building. Interior, gym, same. Justin, athletically built, early 30s, pretty boy, is at work helping Leslie Booker, a supermodel, train. She opens her legs on the thigh machine while he watches her from a few feet away. What else is new? You have got to find a place to live, man. Thanks, Sherlock, self-explanatory. Goodbye. Dude, wait. Guess who I'm helping training for this year's calendar shoot? Leslie Booker. Leslie lit between those toes, Booker. Interior, Extreme Inc. Receptionist Desk, Day. Gambit swings the extreme ink glass doors open and enters. Congrats, they actually trust you with something other than wiping up sweat. I gotta go, call you later. Interior Jim saying. Justin hangs up his phone. He licks his lips seductively at Leslie Booker. She smiles. Can we move to our next workout? My legs feel like they're going to explode. Glad it is. Interior extreme ink receptionist desk day. He stops at the receptionist's desk. Grace, early 20s, shy receptionist, smiles widely at the sight of Gambit. Gambit, today is the new department head interviews, remember? Gambit's eyes get wide. She's just finishing up with Dennis now, I think. You're my lifesaver. Grace smiles even hard. Gambit runs off. Exterior conference room day. As Gambit goes to enter, Dennis, early 30s, Rebecca, early 30s, Greg, mid 30s, in a wheelchair, are exiting. Oh, look who decided to show up. They finish each other's sentences. Late. As usual. Where are you guys, Larry, Rolly, and Hope? Don't worry. Once one of us, real employees, get the new lead position, we will make sure that throw our victories right back into your pitiful face. 
You smelled an abusive father's pickup truck, by the way. Was it hard to keep your legs closed during a real interview, Rebecca? Wouldn't you love to see me and the boss lady go at it? Well, of course, you idiot. Natasha, Extreme Inc. CEO, light Russian accent, is standing behind Rebecca. She clears her throat loudly. <coughs> they move out of her way. Back to work. Yes, yes ma'am. They scurry off. Greg rolls off. Gambit smiles meekly as he goes to follow him. You! In my office, now! Gambit stops dead in his tracks and follows Natasha. God, I'm way too hungover for this. Interior designer makeup company, Day. Cindy sits across from her interviewer, Sally. Sally's eyeshadow is bright and glittery, her lipstick glossy red, and her eyelashes long and thick. So, have you ever worked for a makeup company before? Of course. Ooh. All of them. MAC, Sephora, Victoria's Secret. That is in a makeup country. Isn't it, though? Sally puckers her Botox lips at Cindy. You don't believe me? Well, that's laughable. You're wearing perfume that stenches of whale fat, lipstick that was probably tested by monkeys, and just in general, you're quite possibly one of the most synthetic human beings I've ever come across. And you don't believe me? Sally goes to defend herself. Don't you dare open those balloon animals to me. Cindy throws papers in Sally's face and leaves the office. Exterior building, day. Cindy fights the air, upset. Balloon animals? Damn it, Cindy! A man walks by, eyeing Cindy. He licks his tongue out at her, smiling. Cindy jumps at him. The man runs off, giggling. Her cell phone rings. She answers it. Lace, I blew it. What happened? Oh, she just kept staring at me with those big, fake bat wings on her eyes and judging me with those Grinch-looking green-eyed contacts, asking me insane questions. What kind of question is, do you like makeup? Of course, that's why I applied, bitch. <laughs> you can't lie. I literally hate makeup with a passion. It's too much work and smells like plastic chemicals. Well, I vomited on the trash can and then my anxiety really kicked it up a notch. Not the voices. What about Abogado? Interior, the Temps apartment, day. Lacey watches as Abogado walks inside the apartment, takes his jacket off, and beats the door with it. He's beating the door with his suit jacket again! I thought I had it. I even gave a great presentation. Interior bank, <clears throat> flashback. Abogado smiles hard as he pop lock dances in front of two bank interviewers. He completes his dance, proud of his performance. <laughs> and that? It's for every lucky customer that opens a new account. The interviewer's eyes are wide and motionless. Interior apartment, day. He pop locked. Exterior, New York City streets, same. Cindy laughs loudly. Her laughter turns to tears. <laughs> if we don't find a job in the next week, we're going to have to live right here. Right here on this corner. Cindy sits on the street curb. People crossing yell at her to move. I love the smell of wet cigarette butts and used condoms in the morning. An old man pushes her out of the way with his cane. Move out the way, tramp. Kiss it, granddaddy. What are you complaining about? You're almost out of here anyway, lucky bastard. Interior, Natasha's office day. Gambit sits across from Natasha, staring at her. She stares back. Awkward silence. Gambit goes to break the silence, then... The job is yours. Gambit's mouth is unshut and he is silent. Natasha slams a colored energy drink on the table. Gambit's face scrunches, his amazement quickly killed. This is your first project as a lead. Uh, didn't we survey this a month ago? And the customer reports were horrible. I don't care what the consumer surveys reported. I want this product pushed. Yes, ma'am. I can do that. Just one question. Why me? I noticed that you no longer wear your wedding ring. Gambit covers his hands. I lost it. You also have slapped off tremendously within the past six months. Which leaves me only to assume you are of course having domestic complications, hmm? It was always your position. Consider this your second chance. No more screw-ups or you're gone. Gambit's eyes are fixed on the colored energy drink, hesitating. I'll put Rebecca, Dennis, and Greg on as your team. No! Natasha withdraws her pen from her notepad. She sits back in her chair, upright, and lifts her eyebrows. I... I have my own team. You do? Gambit nods. 
Well, I look forward to meeting them. You'll not regret this. Gannon smiles. Interior gym, day. Cindy, Lacey, Avogado enter the gym. Justin sees them. Hey, roommates. Don't you mean bummies? That's what you call homeless roommates. She had a long day. We all have. Does my pop look not entertaining? You? you can be honest with me. Avogado dances. Justin laughs at them. <laughs> you guys can't find jobs. This is hilarious. I can't believe for the first time ever I'm the responsible one. You do realize if we don't find jobs, you have to move back in with your mother. Cindy, Lacey, and Avogado walk off. Justin scratches his temples. Interior, Mark's therapy office, evening. Gambit lays on the therapist's couch across from his brother Mark, early 40s, Gambit's oldest brother, who is a therapist. Uh, what's going on, Gambit? Why do you want to come see me? You remember that dream I told you about where I'm homeless and yelling up to April's apartment window and then the cops arrest me and then I pee on myself? How could I forget such a colorful dream? Yeah, I keep having it. <laughs> Over and over and over. Okay, I get it. Why haven't you just signed the papers? I'm trying to give her some time to come to her senses, Mark. What part of I don't love you, I don't think I ever have, please let me divorce you. Didn't you understand? The you let me divorce you part? Sounds like a cry for help. You're living out of a moving van, Gambit. You should be crying here. Oh, you, you, you stopped paying my rent! April left you with a rent you couldn't afford. Not me, pal. You're way too obsessive about this. You really gotta learn that nothing lasts forever. Learn to let things go. When have I ever been obsessive? Exterior, neighborhood street, flashback. Pre-teenage Gambit sits in teenage Mark's passenger seat of his brand new car. Whoa, bang and ride, bro. Can I drive it? No. What about tomorrow? No. What about next month? No. <laughs> well, what about... You know, you can never drive my car. It's too awesome. Mark rubs the wheel. Beat. Gambit attacks Mark, fighting over the car's keys. Back to scene. You know what? You're right. I'm gonna win her back. I'm gonna fight for her. Mark hits his head with the palm of his hand. Gambit, I don't quite think you get what I'm... <laughs> Gambit walks over to Mark and hugs him. Great talk, bro. Gambit pats his back and exits the office. Interior gym, same. Cindy is punching and kicking the punching bag. Justin approaches. I'm not going to let you guys make me feel bad about being wondrous. Cindy punches with aggression, ignoring Justin. See? There you go. Doing it again. Well, I don't feel bad about your misfortunes. I'm worried about moving back home with my mom. Cindy grunts with each high kick to the bag. You know why you can't get a job, Cindy? Because of your attitude. You're mad at the world all the time. And it shows. I hate to say it, but you're a certifiable bitch. Cindy punches Justin. Justin falls out. Lacey and Avogado run over. Avogado laughs. <laughs> Interior, Gambit's office day. A physically attractive woman sits across from Gambit, dressed in a sexy formal skirt suit. Gambit smiles. She returns a smile, revealing a mouth full of decayed teeth. I just moved to the big city from Alabama. Interior, Gambit's office, day. An Indian man sits wide-eyed across from Gambit. So you've worked in sales before? Yes, but I will not say where, with who, or for how long. Gambit squints his eyes. Interior, Gambit's office, day. A guy in a tuxedo sits across from Gambit. Why do you have that on? I like tuxedos. Fair. <laughs> Gambit nods. Interior men's restroom, same. Gambit fights the bathroom stall. Greg enters. Gambit straightens his suit jacket and tie. Everything okay there, John? Don't call me that. You have no privilege. You know, being the new lead is ever too much. Gambit wheels Greg's wheelchair into a bathroom stall and closes the door. Gambit leaves the restroom. Real mature. Exterior, New York City streets, day. Gambit sits in his moving van. Justin walks by. Psst! Justin! Right here. Justin turns and sees Gambit in the truck. Oh, I didn't see you in your big moving home van. I got your message. What's the big emergency? I'm gonna get April back. Short, awkward beat. Huh? Gambit gets out of the truck with balloons and candy. Those balloons say Happy Kwanzaa. They're on sale. Just out of curiosity, what's your plan? I'm gonna repropose to her. 
Justin shakes his head, embarrassed for Gambit. With plans of a balloon, I'm not letting you do this. Gambit steps forward. Justin blocks him. Gambit runs around Justin, faking him out. Justin chases him. Gambit runs inside the Starbucks on Columbus Circle with his balloons and chocolates. Interior Starbucks, Columbus Circle, same. Gambit enters, screaming. Customers stare, shocked. Justin is trying to pull him out of the store. Gambit fights him. April! April! Mike, the store manager, comes from behind the counter. April! Sir, you've got to settle down. Mike squints his eyes at Gambit. John? Oh, hey, Mike. Hey, man. Is April back there? April! April! Mike and Justin push Gambit out of the store. Are you insane, dude? April's not even here today. She's managing another store. Why, why, why the hell didn't you just say that, man? Gambit lets his balloons go and picks his candy. Is there any way you could not tell April about this? Get the hell out of here before I call the cops. You're a saint. Truly God's child you are. Justin runs after Gambit. What the hell was that? You almost got me arrested. I don't do well behind bars, Gambit. I'm allergic to iron and man penis. So you're allergic to your own penis. Can we stop saying penis? You really need help, man. I see that now. That's it. Come on. You're moving in with me. I'm fine. My fan is good. I'm good. Life is just so damn good. I, I gotta get back to work. Gambit walks off, punching the air. Justin stands, screaming to him. You were probably not trying to get your Xbox bag on your lunch break. Now, that's a real romance. I hope you know I'm being sarcastic. That was a horrible idea. Interior, McGrill's bar, night. Gambit gulps a glass of beer. The woman sitting across from him rolls her eyes and sighs. So yeah, five years, I gave her everything I had, including sex, money, more sex, love, a lot more sex. She gets up in the middle of Gambit talking. Justin takes her seat. What are you doing? I don't know why. Uh, I'm not used to this anymore. I forgot how to pick how to pick up women. But you definitely learned how to not pick up women. <laughs> Sorry about earlier. It's just been a week since she's moved out. I'm still fragile. Gee, it's been six months since she filled for divorce on your ass. I could lose my job soon too, and then what? Then what? I'll have nothing. I'm falling apart. Gambit starts to cry. Justin slaps him. Ow! Sign the papers and move on. There are worse things in the world. Like what? Candy Crush. That game is the evil in small colorful shapes of delicious candy. It's clear brainwash. Cindy, Lacey, and Avogadro walk up. Gambit, remember my roommate, Cindy, Lacey, and Avogadro? Gambit shakes his head no. He smiles at Cindy and she smiles back. Yeah, it's been years. You know, marriage, you know what marriage can do to a man. I'm like, honey, I want to go out. And she's like, no, stay here. With me, underneath the cover, because we're married. They all look away, scanning the bar. How's life? Suicidal, but fearful. Do you like my pop lock? Avogadro pop locks for Gambit. Your pop lock is beautiful. You guys want a drink? Interior McGrill's bar, hours later. They all throw back a shot. They are all drunk. Okay, new game. I gotta go down the line. You call what you went to school for, and then call out where you're working at now, huh? And you only have five seconds each. This isn't a drinking game. 73% of college grads have jobs in unrelated fields of their major. I read that. In the Washington Post book. A rare book. <laughs> That's not a book, it's a newspaper, idiot. It's so depressing. Ugh. And throw up. So if you work in your field, you don't have to take a shot. It's really just to show how effed up society is. Then we added tequila and made it less depressing. Uh, you guys ready? Now, law degree, working in sales and marketing. Gambit takes a shot and slams the glass on the table. Mass communications unemployed. Takes a shot, slams the shot glass on the table. The bachelor is in Psychology. <laughs> Unemployed. Takes shot, slams the glass. Bachelor's in English. Working on Master's. Unemployed. Lacey slams her shot glass down. Bachelor's in Health Fitness. Unemployed. 
Justin drinks his shot and slams the glass down. Everyone stares at him, shocked. Cindy leaps across the table and chokes him. Gambit pulls her back. Lacey throws her head back and sticks a tissue in her nostril. Avogadro massages his head while he hums. Justin, what happened? It's all you guys' fault. Jinx in me. You're gonna have to live with your mom, Justin. You are lazy, Justin. I can't believe they haven't fired you yet, Justin. You are amazing in bed. Wait from memory. Jinx, jinx, jinx. Interior gym night. Justin is playing Candy Crush on his cell phone. Justin, did you pick up that water spill up? Yep, sure did, Earl. Loud crash and thumps. Justin turns. Earl, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna help you. Don't move one inch. Your neck's touching your shoulder. Oh, wait. That's not your neck. <laughs> Back to scene. Cindy leaps over the table again, choking Justin. Gambit puts his hands up, protecting Justin. Oh, this is perfect! Justin, your, your friend is having a mental breakdown. Quickly, hold his tongue. Avogadro goes to grab Gambit. I'm fine, Abracadabra. I, I, I just have something that could help all of us. Lacey vomits on the table. Her tissue <coughs> shoots out of her nose into the vomit. Ah, uh, I win! Interior Gambit's office moments later. Grace comes over the intercom on his phone. Gambit, I have a group of individuals here for you. Um, they say they're your temps. Arguing is heard in the background through the intercom. Great! I'll be right there. Uh, please hurry! One of them threatened to kill the other one with a ball of yarn. Gambit leaves his office quickly. Interior Extreme Inc. Receptionist desk moments later. Gambit gets off the elevator and Cindy and Justin are arguing over a magazine cover of Leslie Booker. Gambit, <clears throat> Leslie Booker's boobs, real or not real? Not. Justin and Cindy argue more. Lacey sits with her head held back. A piece of tissue sticks out of the end of her nostril. Abogato sits reading a magazine. Justin and Cindy are in each other's face. Which one of you threatened to kill somebody with yarn? They all point to Abogato. Abogato smiles. Good morning, Amplia. Interior Extreme Inc. meeting room next day. Gambit stands in front of the table. Everyone is hungover and sluggish. I've been with this company for about six years. Started in the mail room freshman year just to have a job, and now I'm here. Justin lifts his head from the table. Started from the bottom, now I'm here. Love that song. He lays back down. Cindy rolls her eyes. Now our most current project is this. Gambit pulls in a cart of HPO energy drink bottles. Pretty. Our new energy sports drink, HPO, the hydrating potion. The drink itself is horrific, but no one in the office has the guts to tell my boss that. So you're trying to market something nobody likes. It's not all that bad. It cures hangovers like magic. In 1985, Coke tried a similar venture, switching from their original formula to the newly marketed new Coke formula. It was a flop. The thing about this product, however, is it sucks already. So the only way from there is up, right? I find it unnatural that you know anything about American history. Me too. Me three. Uh, illegal activities make my stomach hurt. Oh no. Oh, wait, that's the tequila from last night. She puts out bad products all the time. Remember Loco Booty? Was that the insane workout DVDs with Ricky Martin? I love those things. Everyone stares at him. What? He had a mad ad core workout. Here's a thought. Why don't you just tell her the truth? You can't market something you hate. It's like a marriage. You either love the product and want to spend the rest of your life with it, or you don't love it at all. A light bulb goes off in Gambit's head. You're right. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't listen to her. She got fired from her last job for her shameless amount of honesty. He is right. Cindy is the perfect storm when it comes to losing your job. Cindy, Justin, Avogadro argue. Gambit tries to calm him down. Lacey opens a bottle of HPO and drinks it. Wow! Gambit's right! I'm not nauseous anymore! They look at Lacey. See? I told you! Hangover cure! But why not market it as hangover potion instead? Cures hangovers in a jiffy! Pirates don't say jiffy. Natasha enters with Greg, Dennis, and Rebecca. Two Japanese men enter and sit down. 
Great, you're all here. And this must be your team? Gambit hesitates. Well, don't just stand there. I have buyers here waiting to see your presentation. I speak Japanese. You do? Sushi, sushi, sushi. Avogadro and Lacey laugh. Enough with the nonsense. I can't sell HPO to Natasha. Everyone gasps. Yes. I, yes! <laughs> I mean, boo. It tastes like turtle pond water. And everybody in the office agrees with me. Natasha looks at Greg, Rebecca, and Dennis. He may be on drugs. Crack? Definitely crack. What if we change his direction and market it as an energy drink for people with hangovers? Ask Lacey, it cures hangovers in a jiffy. I had me a hangover, but me no more. Thanks, Hippo. H-P-O. H-P-O. Lacey smiles. She sits down, wiping her forehead. Natasha looks at Gambit, raising one eyebrow to the ceiling and huffing and puffing. Exterior, New York City streets today. Cindy, Justin, Lacey, Avogadro, and Gambit, the temps, walk down the street with boxes from Gambit's office. There is an upside to all of this. We're unemployed. Again, you are still homeless. And I will never get to see Leslie Booker's boobies again. Call me pessimistic, but what a fight, bro. The unconscious defense mechanism to allay anxiety by denying the existence of important conflicts. Thanks. Denial. Thanks, Abby Dabby. I feel so much better now knowing exactly why I'm such a screw-up. I feel like it's my fault. The pirate accent can be way too much sometimes. You know? I'm really, I'm really great at impressions. Almost like a real pirate trying to attack you. That, that, can, that can be scary. No one talk until we get home. Okay? Interior of the temp's apartment night. Cindy gets out of the tub drying her hair. Justin walks through the door with groceries. Okay, with my last hundred dollars, I got food for the week. A gallon of ice cream and two movies from the Red Box. Rumbo Unleashed and Kill Die Kill 5. <laughs> now this is how guys get over our depressions. No thanks. Not for you, Job Bruner. It's for Gambit. He's really down and out. Where is he? Said he had to get something from his van. Justin looks at Cindy. Cindy's mouth drops. Exterior, New York City streets, same. Justin, Cindy, Avogadro, and Lacey look around for Gambit. Gambit, where are you, dear? Hello? Hello? Gambit, you are just experiencing what psychologists refer to as situational depression. If you don't smoke pot, you should probably start right now. Guys, be quiet! Do you hear that? Dirty Diana song is heard off screen. I know where he is. Justin runs off. They all follow. Exterior, April's apartment building, same. Gambit is setting up a boombox in front of the building. He stops the music, searching around to make sure no one heard him. He finishes setting up. He sets a six-pack of beer next to the boombox. Only one is left unopened. He puts on a fedora hat and gets in his performance stance. Music starts. Michael Jackson, Dirty Diana plays. Gambit's, Gambit lip syncs the song while dancing. This is you, April. You're my Dirty Diana, you filthy, 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 filthy April Anana. The temps approach him, breathing heavily. Gambit, what are you doing? Being a cra crazy homeless drunk. You are really good at it. Maybe we should go back to the apartment, Gambit. Justin bought some good DVDs for you guys. Ramble Unleashed. Uh oh, sounds like a guy's night. Never ever try to talk me off a ledge. Deal. Gambit, I know things look bad, but... But what? It'll get better? Things will change? I don't care if it doesn't work. At least I tried. I'm just dancing for the one I love. Because that's what you do in a marriage. You love it with all you got, or you don't love it all. Cindy smiles. Lacey walks up and dances with Gambit. You got some crazy moves for a wacka, chicken liver. Gambit dances with Lacey. Abogado joins. Come on, Jay. Remember how we danced at the wedding? You're a horrible dancer. That's why you're getting a divorce. Justin joins them. Okay, great fun. Now, let's go before someone calls the police. Come on, for once, don't worry about doing everything right. That makes no sense. Exactly. 
Abogado pulls Cindy into the dance group. They all dance to Dirty Diana. Dirty Diana! Walking by, pulls his camera phone out and starts to film Gambit's performance. Dirty Diana, come on, oh, come on, let me back into your heart, Dirty April. You shut the hell up, you stupid rejects. They all continue to sing and dance. Sirens sound. Cop cars pull up. Police officers get out. The temps all try to run. The police catch them and handcuff them. Bystanders laugh at them. This is so much better than reality TV. Gambit screams. Get your dirty little paws off me, officer! Lacey, enough with the accents! We're going to jail! Please, put me anywhere that other men are not. Janitor's closet, cubicle, porta potty, I don't care. Just no penis. No penis! You are unracist! April, help! Stop a peeing, hard peeing! Interior police station day. The temps exit the jail cell. Mark stands waiting for them. Mark. Oh my god. Thank god. Gambit hugs him. April call me. She won't press charges if we sign the papers. Police officer pulls the papers out. Gambit stares at everyone. He signs the papers. They all yours. Thank you, officer. Interior Mark's car, day. Mark and Gambit ride in silence. Michael Jackson? Really? See why you nicknamed me Gambit, Mark. I'm the underdog of the X-Men. I never get to have sex with Rogue because she's too strong and I'm too weak. Listen, bro. I call you Gambit because ever since we were little, no matter what, you always have a smile on your face. You're always upbeat, no matter how many times the X-Men left you out of the real live-action movies. Oh, sir. This... Gambit laughs. <laughs> this has been the lowest I've ever seen, bro. And I gotta say, I hate it. It hurts my heart that April left you so damaged. So broken. So beaten. So... I get it. You did the right thing, signing those papers. I'm proud of you. Gambit nods. How'd you know it was Michael Jackson? Oh, you guys are all over YouTube. They're calling you the Peabody team. Mark laughs. Gambit looks disturbed. Interior, the temps, apartment, day. Gambit is asleep on the couch. His cell phone rings. He answers sleepily. Hello? His eyes get wide. He jumps up. Interior, the temps, apartment, day. A loud booming knock on the door. Cindy checks the peephole. Joe, the super, stands outside the door. Open up. It's me, Joe. OMG! Lacey wakes up. How do you... Cindy covers Lacey's mouth. Cindy motions for Lacey to be quiet. It's a super! He's kicking us out! Lacey starts to cry. Her nose starts to bleed. She quickly stuffs a sock in her nostril. More booming knocks. Maybe if he thinks we're gone, he'll go away! They stand still, not moving or making a sound. One last boom! The door opens. Joe sees the girls standing in a huddle. Oh no, I seem to have dropped my shirt. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Lacey bends over. Her sock in her nose falls out. Cindy smiles and bends over with Lacey. Me too. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Joe shakes his head. Exterior, the temps apartment, day. Justin and Abogado run up in jogging outfits. All their things are being moved out of the apartment. Whoa, whoa. Put my grandmama last back. Put it back. Those are my CDs. Oh, watch my idiot. Be careful with her. She is fragile. What the hell happened? I don't feel so good. A bagato fans Lacey with a towel. It's over. We're too late. Justin drops to his knees. I don't want to live with my mother. Back to the family restaurant I go. Back to North Dakota. Is that where you're from? Lacey gives Justin a look of non-belief. Gambit? They all look at Gambit. He's clean shaven and in a nice suit. He looks like an angel. Gambit approaches them, confused. What happened? What do you think, G? Look around. Hey, put my curtains back on the vault. What happened to you? You shaved. I heard change was a good thing. Cindy smiles. 
Well, I'm glad you guys are packed. Avogadro, quickly, diagnose him. No need. But Natasha called me this morning. They love the new direction. They love hangover por potion. We're employed. They all get excited. Justin continues to fight with the movers. And that's not the best part. Gambit holds up the keys. Corporate apartments! Everyone is shocked. Oh my God. Yes, ladies and gents, Natasha signed a one-year contract with us to see how we perform, and the more success we make for the company, the more perks we get. What if we fail? Then we lose everything and we're back to square one. Everyone understands nothing. Grab him. He's losing it. They got movers coming, so quick. Grab some clothes. We, we gotta get back to the office. They rummage through their disorganized clothes and grab their suits. They drag an unknowing Justin along as he cries. They all hop in a minivan cab and drive off. Interior, Cindy's condo, day. Cindy falls on her brand new bed. Interior, Lacey's condo, day. Lacey jumps on her bed. She falls on the floor and stands, holding her head back, rushing to the bathroom. Interior, Abogado's condo, day. Abogado stands in front of his mirror, does a... 007 turn in his suit and shoots his finger guns. Interior Justin's condo day. Justin humps his new television. Interior Gambit's combo, condo day. Gambit presses a button and his blinds open. He jumps in the air excited. Interior condo's hallway day. The temps walk out of their individual condos on the same floor, lock the doors, and walk down the hall into the elevator together. Someone farts. They all try to run off as the elevator doors close on them. Interior Extreme Inc. Floor Day. The temps walk down the aisle of the, of the cubicles. Employees stand to see them. They walk as a unit in an action movie. Natasha suddenly walks in their path, breaking their cruel rhythm. Glad you're on time. Leslie Booker just got here. She's in meeting room one. Wait, did you just say Leslie Booker was here? Yes. She's our new face for the HBO drink. And she's waiting to meet the X team. Natasha smiles and walks off. Justin grabs a nearby cleaning lady and kisses her. Today I'm no longer Justin. I'm now G. Sustin. Woo, Leslie baby, I'm coming. Justin runs off into the meeting room. Cindy shakes her head. They follow him. Interior, Gambit's combo, condo, living room, night. The temps sit in Gambit's condo with drinks and food. They're still in their work clothes. They're gathered around the television. Kill, die, kill five. The title cinematically shoots across the television. The girl in a bikini runs on the beach at night. Her acting is horrible. Oh no! I hope the killer doesn't find me here alone in my bikini and kill me! I don't want to die! A rattling in the bushes on the movie. Oh no! It's the killer! He wants to kill me! They all get up and start to leave Gambit's condo. Except Avogadro. He's glued with interest in the movie. Oh, cheerio. Okay. That's it. Oh. Leslie's coming by. I hope you guys don't hear my rapture in penis pounds as I break in my new bed. Someone needs to kill, die, kill you. It is just getting to the good part. Gambit cuts the movie off. He hands the DVD to Avogadro. Gotta wake up early. They all leave Gambit's condo. Gambit takes his suit off and finds his wedding ring in one of the pockets. He places it on his coffee table and lays down on the couch. He stares at the ring until he falls asleep. His cell phone rings. He answers it, groggy-like. Hello? Hi, John. Is this a bad time? It's me, April. End of show.